riding the Great Divide, Roosevelt to Lima, Montana. Antelope Wells, here we go. Yeah, that's right. We thought we'd make Antelope Wells and back in one year. In fact, we figured we'd make it there and back in about two weeks. Boy, were we wrong. On June 28th, we left home, crossed the border at Roosevelt, headed south on 93, turned east onto the Grave Creek Road, and ran the gravel towards Glacier National Park on excellent, excellent backcountry gravel roads. Life was looking good. With lots of backcountry roads, we discovered that Mr. Garmin doesn't always keep up with your location relative to intersection. As a result, we found ourselves starting to do some backtracking on a regular basis. Here we pass some campers with bikes, boats, trucks, and beer. Since Mike had the Garmin on his handlebars, he got to go first doing the route finding. I got to suck his dust most of the time. I wrote in my journal that the roads around here were wide curvy, smooth, and an awful lot of fun. And I agree, they really were even when I watched my videos. At this point in the journey, we both really thought we were gonna make Antelope Wells an easy time. We were smiling and happy and completely wrong. The area suffered a number of forest fires in August of 2015 and I have no idea if this route still exists and whether or not these roads still look like this now. We had dinner in Whitefish, Montana and we discovered that from Whitefish through Columbia Falls almost all the way to Creston, Montana, we were on range roads paved and full of traffic, not what we were expecting to find on this trip. The divide gets us back into the Flathead National Forest and here we discover Mr. Garmin still can't quite keep up with our pace. Quick stop on the side of the road, wait for Mr. Garmin to catch up to our location, a U-turn, and away we go back to the intersection we missed. As we traveled up this logging road, we were looking for a pullout where we could set up camp and have a nice quiet sleep. We were very successful, and this is about where we spent our first night on the road. Day two dawn, cloudy, colder, and damp. The road was great, I got stung right in the back of the neck early in the morning, but that didn't stop us and we had a great ride. About three hours of roads just like this. We were all alone. The ride came to an unexpected conclusion with our first seasonal road closure. We were a day early. We get to here because we're up there. So we got to go back to there and then it's one highway. Yeah, well, you should actually a long fucking way back. So the closed gate right near Fatty Creek meant we had to backtrack across Fatty Creek Road and get on to number eight. We ended up going through Ovando, and we've been through there a few years before, and ended up going over Huckleberry Pass and Lincoln as well. Axis and Sauce. Don't leave home without them. The road continued to be in good shape and well used as we climbed up the mountains into the backcountry. Nice, fairly well packed gravel, no surprises, no major potholes, and we continued to make really good time. As we climbed higher, the forest got thinner, the road got less well used and a little bit rougher. You had to keep your eyes open for obstructions above and below. 
Occasionally we hit stretches of road that reminded me of the Upper Elk Valley in the region where we're from. This next bit's on the Rimini Alternate, and we hope to use this to get past Helen and cut a few miles off the road. Unfortunately, right near the end, we were met by a closed gate, and we had to backtrack all the way back to Highway Number 12, take the main route into Helena. This is all filmed in real time. Give some consideration to taking a hard right and wondering which tree's going to stop and fall first. Probably wouldn't fall far because some tree's going to stop your descent really quickly. This is about a mile or so away from where we came upon the closed gate and we had to turn around and retrace our steps for quite a while. Night number two, south of Helena in the rain. Just got off the road in time. Our campsite was at Park Lake, Montana. This portion of the Divide Trail has the most technical riding of the whole trip, apparently, and we got to do these great climbs and descents under a perfect blue sky. Here is one of those locations where Mike stops, decides he's not going any further, and we turn around and we take another way. It was a good choice, as this particular shortcut ended in one heck of a large boulder field at the other end. As we traveled back and forth across the Continental Divide, Mike kept commenting on how the ABS brakes were spectacular and he wasn't sliding that front end at all. Well, guess what? Even ABS has a limit when you're going downhill in a boulder field. This is where Mike experienced his first motorcycle drop. Ouch. From that point on, rear brakes only off-road, thanks very much. I allowed Mike to get a really good head start on this hill, and I took off and ran up. You'll notice the engine sounds a little bit odd because the microphone is mounted to the front fairing, so it muffled the sound of the engine a lot. As I climb, you'll notice there's signs from the rain the night before. There's some puddles and there's some soft mud, all to make it that much more fun. Can't really even imagine trying to do this and not be standing up on the pegs. It smooths everything right out. It just brings a smile to the face. Once we got over the top, we started to descend on this nice country road all the way into Basin, Montana, where we stopped for lunch.
Here's a view of the Silver Saddle Cafe in Basin, Montana, and my leaking front fork. Here we are on the I-15 alternate, a rail bed that parallels the highway. Look at that cave-in. I'd hate to hit that. On the map, this is known as Tunnel Number 9. It was really cool. Like a scene from The Walking Dead. Inviters in here, man. The walkers waiting for us on the other side? We just don't know. Here we are on I-15 descending into Butte, Montana. The next few minutes of video cover about four hours of riding on Fleecer Ridge, and this has to be the most technical part of the entire journey from here to Antelope Wells. If we'd actually read the map before we started, we might have taken the alternate route. However, really, maybe we would have been dumb enough to try this anyway. If you look quickly to your right, there, that's the turn we were supposed to have made. Once again, we are traveling faster than Mr. Garmin could keep rebuilding his route. You can see it drops pretty quickly off to the right there. But really, what I want to talk to you about is something called target fixation, which is where your eyes focus on something and you just can't stop but steer right into it. Now, I'm not saying I'm about to do that. Being tired of the ruts, I'm going to try it in the field. Off I go. Look at that little white dot in front of me. Watch what happens when my engine guard hits it. So, this is the trail we were supposed to have gone on. The map addenda actually says the fence is falling down and you can't see it. However, you can see the row of dead pines with the healthy pines. So I crashed up there. The video doesn't give the steepness it's due. So somewhere down there is wise Montana. And somewhere up here are two fools on motorcycles. Looking to the left, you see how steep the slope gets. And we're about to drop off that. Now, having just fallen down, one's gotta get one's mojo back. At some point in this journey, on this soft, clay, um, shale-like surface, we've passed the point of no return, where it's just too steep to try and climb up, if you could even turn around in the sage. It took us over three hours to cover this last quarter mile dropping down the slope. We actually used rope and we bulldogged the motorcycles down this slope. Okay, Mike, what was the name of that hill we were on today? It was called the... The Hill of Hell. How long was it? A quarter mile. Straight down? Doesn't look that way in the pictures, but holy cow. We're still here to talk about it. Just. And I left a mirror on the hillside for memorial. You did. I did.